The JProfiler GUI communicates with the profiling agent through a network socket. So it doesn't much matter if the profile JVM is running locally or on a remote machine. In order to connect the two, you just have to specify the host name and the port on which the profiling agent is listening, and you're good to go. In the real world, however, a direct network connection is not always possible. You may have a corporate network topology that does not allow this, or the connection goes through the open internet where you would need some kind of authentication. While you can set up an SSH tunnel by yourself, it's kind of cumbersome, you have to remember a lot of options, and if you're doing multiple hops, then it gets really complicated. Fortunately, JProfiler has built-in SSH tunnel functionality. Here I'm on the Quick Attach tab, and I've selected the On Another Computer option, which is a great way to get started without configuring a new session up front. And instead of entering a host name and a profiling port, I switch to the SSH tunnel option. When we set up the SSH tunnel, we have two options. Either we have a direct SSH connection, or we configure the more general case, where we connect through multiple SSH servers in order to reach our final destination. And once we exit from the SSH tunnel, we can then make a direct network connection to the profiling agent. However, in our demo, we don't do multiple hops, and the profiling agent is running directly on the SSH server, so we go back one step in the wizard and select the simpler configuration. I have to specify the username, the host, and the authentication method. I'm using private key authentication here, but password authentication is also supported. The final piece of information that's required is the profiling port on which the profiling agent is listening. Now that is either something that you've configured in an integration wizard, or something that you got from the JP Enable command line utility that allows you to set up any Java process for remote profiling. Let's try out JP Enable on the remote machine. First of all, I have to open an SSH terminal session. The next question is how do I install JP Enable? The good news is that it's very easy. You just download the JProfiler targz file from the JProfiler download page you extract it and you run JP Enable that's contained in the bin directory. You don't have to enter a license key or run any kind of installer. Here I've extracted JProfiler in the home directory, so this is the path to JP Enable. On this machine there's only one Java process running, so JP Enable doesn't give me a list of Java processes that I could select from, but it directly connects to the single Java process that was detected. We accept the default option that we connect with a JProfiler GUI, and we also accept the profiling port suggested by JP Enable. The profiling agent has now been loaded in the Tomcat instance. It's listening on port 31757, and we can copy this port and paste it into our SSH tunnel configuration. If you have a local SSH installation, you should verify SSH host keys against a list of known hosts. This will work fine here, but in a multi-hop situation, there may be a need to disable this. So now the configuration is finished, and we can close the wizard. If that's not enough to get out of your local machine, JProfiler also supports SOX proxies that work with and without SSH tunnels. Let's now connect to the profile JVM. We get the usual session startup dialog where you can configure profiling settings and then we're live. So as you can see, starting your session through an SSH tunnel is now as easy as if you had a direct network connection.